In this video, we're going to talk about ways to optimize videos to be directly posted on a website. Very often, the videos you see on a website aren't directly uploaded to the website. They're embedded videos from YouTube, Vimeo, or other video sharing platforms. Now, that's evidently a practical solution because the video is not taking up your online storage and makes your website faster too, as the video does not need to be loaded in. Plus, the video players that video sharing platforms have are probably better than the built-in web players. Because don't forget that when you upload an image or video to your website, it will be physically stored somewhere and will be loaded in through the internet to show up on your web page. Now, in some cases, however, you'll want to have your video to be directly uploaded onto your website. All right, so let's look at ways of optimizing a video for a website. Let's start with the most obvious one. The two best formats to use for videos on a website is MP4, H.264 and WebM, VP9. These are widely supported formats when it comes to online videos, ensuring that the video will play in most web browsers played on most devices. Here is how to convert a video into these formats. First of all, download the Uniconverter from videoconverter.wondershare.com. When you have the software installed, open the converter tool that will be featured on the home interface. Next, import your video files. The converter supports batch conversion, so you can perform this task on all of your videos simultaneously. Then click down here to select the output format. Choose either MP4 or WebM. This time I will choose WebM as it has a slightly higher compression rate. I choose VP9 as the codec. Finally, after choosing an output folder, I'll click on convert all. That's it. Now, having the video files in the right format is one thing, but if they're too large, even if they're compatible with the player, the playback can be slow. Not to mention that the videos will use up your storage space in no time. So striving for the smallest size possible and the highest quality is what we want. Therefore, next, we're going to use the compressor tool. This tool is in the video section of the Uniconverter, so find the compressor tool. The same way, import your videos. Then here, click on the settings icon. Now, here you have the option to choose from basic compression and AI compression mode. The AI compression will perform a much higher compression ratio while keeping the quality high, but the output format in this case will be MP4. With the basic compression mode, you can choose WebM and in the advanced settings, you can choose VP9 as the codec. The AI compression mode will make the files much smaller, but you have to be more careful because a seemingly lower compression rate will result in a significantly higher compression compared to the basic compression mode. It's something that you can experiment with. I'll go with the basic compression mode this time, as I have my files in WebM. If you choose the compression ratio one by one for the files, you'll also see the estimated output file size. However, the actual output file size can differ. All in all, once you're set, just choose an output folder and click on compress all. On this clip, just to demonstrate, I performed the compression both with the AI compression mode and the basic compression mode. And as you can see, the quality for the clips are the same, but the AI compression has a much lower size. Lastly, I'll talk about video enhancement. This can mean several things. Quality enhancement, for instance, fixing blurry footage, upscaling videos, removing noise, or interpolating frames. Fixing stutter videos are just simply giving one a higher frame rate. Now, these features come in handy when you least expect it, but knowing in those moments what tool to use is a huge relief. So I'll show you how this tool works in the Uniconverter. You'll find it in the video section of the tool. It'll only work with one video at a time. So first import your video, then choose your function. In this case, I'll choose frame interpolation because I'd like to slow this video down without it being stuttery. For the frame interpolation feature, you have an extra setting. It's the same for the upscaler, by the way, where you need to choose your ratio. In this case, we can choose from two times and four times. I'll choose four times for the smoothest slow motion. 
Then I just choose an output folder and click on export. Afterwards, I'll be able to slow this video down and it will give me a smooth motion. Now, these tasks that I listed for optimizing videos don't have to follow in this order. Naturally, sometimes you might want to upscale a video first, then compress it, and then lastly give it its final format. But generally, in my book, these are the three main aspects of optimizing a video for a website. If you found these tips helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.